Hey guys, it's The Wife. I have a challenge for Tyler today. We have a lot of Christmas packages coming from Amazon. We need a parcel box for weather protection and just to look nicer outside. Let's see if he is up for the challenge that I have for him today. Hey, hon. What's up? We need a package box, you know, for all those packages coming in. All our Christmas packages. Okay. Yeah. So how about you build it with three tools? I got this beautiful shop, why would I use three tools? Because your subscribers don't have this beautiful shop and everyone gets packages. So how about three tools and you build it out of the shop. I found your key. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna lock you out. What do you think? Uh, I think that's a bunch of rubbish, but I could probably use a circular saw. I use one of my mini drills and I'll probably need a jigsaw to do some of the bridle cuts. Okay, you can have two batteries. I'm gonna take all three batteries. Three? And I'm oh. also gonna take my tool pouch because that's kind of like what I have in my pockets all the time. Okay. I could probably do that. Okay. So we have been locked out of the shop. I got my three tools plus some screws, drill bits over there. Got my lumber right there and I got my plans right here. Link to these down in the description below if you want some as well. It's a little bit echoey in here so hopefully it sounds okay to you guys. Let's get started and see if DIY Tyler can even build without his beautiful shop. All right, where we would typically start at the miter station, we're actually going to be making our miter crosscuts with that circular saw and a speed square. And I'm using the speed square to make sure that the saw stays perpendicular to what I want to cut, and this will give me nice square edges. Cutting up a bunch of two by four to make the base, and then the siding and structure pieces of this build are actually made from five and a half inch wide fence boards that are available at all the different home centers. So we cut those pieces up for the base, and that's just going to be held together with one in a 5 8 inch deck screws. As you can see here, there's one piece that is going to be overhanging the back, and we're going to cut that with the circular saw, whereas in the past, in the shop, I would use the table saw for something like this. To make it easier to handle, I screwed it down first and then made sure the depth of my circular saw wasn't cutting too deep because if I am off a little bit, you don't want to hit those 2x4s. So I struck a line and cut it using the base itself to hold everything together, keeping my fingers safe as can be. Back to the circular saw again to cut up a bunch of 2x4s to make the structure of this parcel box. Again, we're using the speed square to make sure everything is perpendicular. And a quick little tip for every time I mark things out with a tape measure is I strike a line where I need the cut and then I always draw an arrow on which side I want the blade. If you look at your circular saw, you'll notice a notch up front, and this indicates the blade. So if you line up that line on one side of that notch or the other, that's going to be the status of your blade. So if you make sure you have that on the right side, you'll get perfectly flush cuts every time using this speed square method, just like this. One of the items I always miss when I'm working out of the shop is the dust collection. Dust gets everywhere and you never realize how much of it you actually produce. We are now going to screw together the structure of the parcel box. I'm using two and a half inch deck screws and we are toe nailing them together. Obviously when you toe nail the screws are on an angle down, but I always like to add an angle away or towards each other for a little more adding power. Here is our first side done and we are going to repeat it again for the second side. Once the sides are done, we can join them together with a cross brace and then screw the whole thing down to that base we created in the earlier step. And now we are going to be adding the top shelf before we put on any of the siding on the sides. There are measurements in the plan for this, but I would always recommend to verify this in the field, VIF, just in case any of your previous measurements were off a little bit, you are not cutting up a bunch of material that you have to throw away to make sure you have the proper measurements. Adding the side siding using one in five eighths inch deck screws. And as you can see here, there is an overhang in the effort of limited tools, I'm using a nice straight fence board to strike my line. And again, I'm going to be using the circular saw set to the right depth with the board screwed in place to hold it stationary for me to trim those sides flush. And you do want to save these pieces because they can be used for the door. It happened to be a perfect size piece for me. 
for the door siding, so make sure you save all of your cutoffs until you're done. Speaking of the door, that is just held together with two and a half inch deck screws toe nailed as we did for the sides before. This frame is inset and we will have the five and a half inch wide siding on the front. I cut all of those siding pieces down to length. One of the little pieces that I cut off the back happened to be the perfect piece to allow me to finish the front door siding. So like I said, don't throw anything away until you're done. So we do need two small pieces to cover the 2x4 on either side of the door. This will give us a flush point to mount the hinges and the lock there. Most days I would throw this on the table saw and cut it to the perfect dimension, but we only have a circular saw today. Again, my straight fence board allows me to strike a line, and then I am repositioning the board as I cut so that I don't cut through my tabletop, which happens to be the house. And this way you can keep your hand out of the way and cut thinner pieces like we're showing right here to cover that front 2x4. We're going to be using some black hardware on here, and these are some 4 inch hinges from the home center. If you take a close look at the measurements on the plans, you'll notice that the door frame is smaller than the opening, and this is so that the door can open and close without any interference. I laid some deck screws down, thread towards the front to give me the perfect spacing of that door. Once the screws are out of the way, it opens and closes no problem. Now that we got our door in place, let's go ahead and add that locking mechanism, which in my case is just a gate lock. going for 39 degrees on the point right here. So here is 40 degrees, there's 39. I'm gonna line that up right there and then right off the corner. Strike a lot. So these 39 degrees right here are where our two points are gonna to connect to make the peak. And then down on this side, I need to cut a section out where the house is actually gonna sit right here. So to do that, I'm going to first take a measurement to 2 and 15 sixteenths ish, right about there. And then we need a 39 degree mark right here. So we're gonna go ahead and put our pivot point right there and pivot out until we see 39 degrees right here. Here's 35, 40, 45. So we'll go up to 39 right there and strike a lock. While we have the square right here, go ahead and make a mark at 1 and 7 eighths right there. And this is where our other line is going to be struck, but from the other side. So we're going to go ahead and lay our pivot point up here and find 51 degrees in this case. Here's 45, 50, 51 is what we're after right there. And then go ahead and slide your square down till you see the mark that we laid right there. So again, fine tune to 51, find our mark, check it again, 51, strike a line. And this is what we want to remove right here. And that'll sit, and that little bridle will sit right on the top of the house. My jigsaw happens to have a few different settings which change the aggressiveness of the blade. I had it on setting one or two to allow me to cut through these wet pressure treated boards. Jigsaws are a little bit tricky. You need to cut nice and straight and you need not too much pressure otherwise you will make that blade tilt one way or the other. So take it nice and slow and you'll get nice straight cuts. I toe nailed the peaks together and then pinched them into place on top of the house and it was a perfect match. Always an exciting feel. Making sure everything is nice and square, we are toe nailing these quote unquote trusses into place. To add some structure to the roof, we are again using our 5.5 inch wide fence boards. These are screwed in place using the 1 and 5 8 inch deck screws. Have an overhang on the bottom of either side, and again we are striking a line and using the circular saw with the board held in place by the roof. The fence boards along the back, I want to go all the way up to the roof line to provide a back wall for that top cubby that you can see there. I marked out all these boards using a board that I had previously cut to 39 degrees. This was just easier than marking them out with a square every time. I struck a line and cut them down with my circular saw. 
Again, once they were screwed into place, I used a circular saw to cut them much easier than cutting each individual piece without it attached to the structure. Now those fence boards look cute for the roof, but this stuff is even better. This is actually a tar sheet that you're seeing right here. Typically you would see something like this in polycarbonate or metal, but this stuff is tar that you can cut with a circular saw or utility knife like I am doing right here. This stuff is available at Lowe's and it is by Audioline USA. This is a beautiful shade of red that we have on several other structures around our house, so it matches perfectly and looks fantastic. Screws in place super easy, cuts with a utility knife, you can't beat it. Once we had the roof on, the wife and I added a couple coats of exterior grade paint to match our house. Very nice, huh? Yeah. You did it! Cute. Three tools. Three tools. Can I do it? Um, I checked on them a couple times. She Can't checked, cheat. made sure I wasn't cheating, I wasn't cheating. Three tools out in the garage. And there you go. You guys can do this too if you have three very simple tools. Yeah. We have plans for this down in the description below so that you can be prepared for all of the packages you're going to get this Christmas season. I'm DIY Tyler. I'm the wife. You guys have a good one.